And my lady, let's try answering the riddle again, using only a single goblin. We can move our entire army again if we answer it correctly. Be but that would be shameful in its cowardice. You do realize that number 695 is watching us, don't you? I think we should prioritize winning here. Th they v conquered the fourth floor. The rats are moving like trained soldiers. We can't stop them. My lady. Chloe was silently begging Haku to realize that there was simply no time. And Haku, experienced as she was, made her decision. Very well. We will boldly, boldly, use goblins here. Hashtag Kaima's perspective. Hey, Kaima. Isn't this riddle the one that I... Yep. This is the one you solved in three seconds, Rokuko. You're incredible. I'm sincerely impressed. You didn't even read the entire riddle before answering. W.L., that's because it told me the answer at the start. I can't believe number 89 is struggling so much with it. This kind of riddle is harder the smarter you are. Once you get stuck, it's really hard to realize what's going on. And I mean, wow, your older sister really is smart. I'm actually really impressed with all the wild answers she's thinking up on the spot. I watched Haku's troops out of the corner of Maya while guiding the rats through her dungeon. The extra copper coin becomes the party's shared property, while the other 99 coins are split equally. Poof, whoosh. Crash. Two of the party members are slaves, and their owner gets to keep all the money to himself. Poof, whoosh. Crash. Due to a wrong answer. Another goblin fell down the pitfall. Gah! My lady! Haku had completely fallen into the puzzle's trap. No matter how hard or long she thought, every answer was wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. NGH, how fearsome. I didn't expect such a psychological attack during a dungeon battle like this. Um, my lady. Is this truly a gate of wisdom? A gate of wisdom? is a special dungeon trap that tests the wisdom of invading adventurers. It was an incredibly sturdy door, but anyone could pass through it if they solved its riddle. Haku had challenged the riddle on the plaque assuming that the door before her was in fact a gate of wisdom. W.H. what? Do you have any evidence that it is not, Chloe? Indeed. First of all, I question the veracity of any puzzle that one with a mind as strong as yours could not solve, my lady. And secondly, I must also question whether Kaima would have enough DP to purchase a gate of wisdom, considering how expensive the traps before this one have been. Indeed, Haku herself had said, I doubt there will be any significant traps beyond this point. After overcoming the labyrinth, a gate of wisdom would, at the very least, cost 30,000 DP. The simpler the riddle, the more sturdy it would be, and the harder the riddle, the more fragile it would be. It would cost large amounts of DP to keep the door sturdy with such a difficult riddle. This was quite an expensive trap for a battle of only 100,000 DP. Which means, this is, it is quite possible that it is simply an ordinary door that he expected to be broken. Or perhaps it is a trap where attempting to answer the question in front of it will cause the floor to open. That would be an absolutely devilish trap. No matter how many times you attempted to answer the riddle, the door would never open, even if your answer was correct. The moment you stopped to think about the riddle, you had already lost. And my goodness, this is just frightening. W.H. What in the world is wrong with Kaima's head? I've never seen a trap as unfair as this one. It's just cowardly. But truly, I am impressed you saw through it, Chloe. You supported me when my vision grew too narrow just as I'd expect from my right-hand woman. Your praise honors me beyond words. Um. Misha, the pink-haired war cat, hesitantly raised her hand. Among all the five retainers in the master room, she was the least suited to solving riddles. To put it simply, she was an airhead. Haku directed a bright, visibly angry smile towards her. What is it, Misha? I've already decided to destroy this door through righteous violence. Are you trying to get in my way? I would never dream of that. It's just, um, I was thinking. Maybe the answer to the riddle is just, simple. H.M.? Simple. W.H. What are you talking about, Misha? Oh, I see. 
It is true that this is quite a simple trap at heart. It merely presents a question without an answer. And no, that's not what I mean. Um, it says right there at the start that the answer is simple, doesn't it? The air froze. And no way. Ha ha ha, that'd be ridiculous. Gigi's, Misha, what kind of idea is that? Seriously, Misha, that's just... Their voices were stiff and shaky. By this point, all the retainers were thinking that might actually be the right answer. The retainers. And Haku herself, too. Even Chloe. Chloe. I will give the riddle one more try. Understood. Haku gave the last answer herself, prepared for her heart to shatter if that was indeed the correct answer. The answer is simple. Ding! The door made a sound, signifying that it had been unlocked. Haku's heart shattered. The gate of wisdom slowly opened. Haku gathered her shattered heart together as best she could and tried peering through the door. But couldn't. Reason being, there was a solid wall on the other side of the door and on that solid wall was a sign with, under construction, written on it. Haku's shattered heart exploded. Hashtag Kaima's perspective. Oh nice, she figured it out. Hey, why'd you end the dungeon there anyway? Weren't you going to make a whole floor there? Yeah, but I actually ran out of time before I could finish it. Eh, and not because I was sleeping, okay? Seriously. Rokuko shook her head, clearly thinking. Ah, uh, he totally slept instead of making it. Rokuko checked the map to confirm that there was nothing on the top floor before looking at me. Unable to bear her narrowed eyes, I changed the subject. To tell the truth, I gave up on the riddle after you solved it instantly. I figured it would be best to just be bold and not make the floor at all. How is that bold? I just thought it'd surprise them, basically. Well, it is pretty surprising who would end a massive labyrinth with a dead end. But anyway, where do they even go from there? I hid one dummy core in a pitfall and three in the labyrinth. They walked by every single one. Two of them were in small rooms pushing out of the square-shaped labyrinth, and one was in the ceiling. Haku didn't notice them since I had hidden them behind wall golems. The dungeon would cease functioning if the real dungeon core were hidden behind a wall so if I needed to use the castling function to swap it with one of the dummy cores, I would just make the wall golem them move out of the way. As an aside, the dungeon core wouldn't be considered blocked off as long as there was a door to its location. I didn't really know the exact logic behind it, but surrounding it with wall golems was a clear no-go. No idea why, though. But my thoughts were interrupted by our units finding the boss room. I was genuinely stunned that our rats had made it that far into the dungeon. Grawa. Within the boss room was a minotaur. But not just any minotaur. The minotaurs that invaded our dungeon all had brown fur like you would expect, but this minotaur had red fur. Making it a red minotaur. This guy sure is red. But why red? Is he super shy or something? Yep, he's red. I think monsters of the fire element usually end up being red. And you can count on fire monsters having high attack power. That's their thing. Indeed, the red minotaur was snorting fire out of his nose. We can't just ignore him and slip into the next room, can we? No way. The door out won't open until you beat the boss. Our gray rats were facing a red minotaur as their final opponent. There's an idiom that goes like... A cornered mouse will bite a cat. Hopefully being cornered gives our rat pals here enough courage to beat this red, muscular cow. Graa! The red minotaur swung his metal club sideways, scraping it against the floor. Our rats were blown back in all directions, as if they had been packed tight into a water balloon that just burst. Several of them managed to escape by jumping away, but nonetheless, over fifty rats had died in a single swipe. Oh shit. That was almost half of them. Kaima, are you going to use your secret weapon now? Nah, it's not an actual weapon or anything. It won't help us here. Meet. Prepare our second wave, the Golem Platoon. I hadn't expected the rats to reach the core alone, so I had prepared a platoon of golems equipped for dungeon invasion. But could they beat the Red Minotaur either? Golems weren't fast. 
They'd be crushed beneath his club just like the rats were. They were ultimately just dolls made of clay and stone, after all. I guess the story of Kaima the adventurer begins here. Wait, Kaima. I have an idea on how to win this. Can we try it out? Rokuko smirked confidently, her tone dripping with pride. Huh? Tell me what the idea is first. Okay. Listen up, because I'm about to tell you something amazing. Believe it or not, minotaurs die if their heads come off. Uh, I think that's true for basically every living thing, not just minotaurs. Guess I should use the last of our DP to buy some nice tools that'll be useful while I'm working in Haku's dungeon. So basically, we should just focus on attacking its head. Even gray rats should be able to do some damage then. I dunno about that. Won't the fire from his nose just burn them all to death? Not if they clog his nose and stop him from breathing. That's not what. I, wait, hold on. Stop him from breathing, huh? All right. Let's give it a shot. I watched the roaring minotaur closely while giving orders to the rats. All units, attack the specified point. The rats surrounding the minotaur all charged forward. Experienced as gray rats were with climbing even steep cliff faces, the minotaur's legs proved to be no more than ladders assisting their ascent. The red minotaur swung his body around to try and knock them off, but he couldn't shake them all off. Five rats managed to reach his head. The red minotaur tried to spit out fire. But him preparing to spit out fire was exactly the opening I was waiting for. I sent two rats towards his large nose, and soon both of his nostrils were clogged. The minotaur immediately opened his mouth to suck in air. And as he did so, I sent the other three rats straight into his mouth. Wait, what? Kaima, he ate them. Nope. This is what I was banking on, Rokuko. Now that they're in his throat, I'm gonna order them to keep still and block it up. The rats obeyed my orders and kept still, clogging the red minotaur's air duct. Unable to breathe, the red monster could do nothing but flail his body around in a rampage. He crushed the rats in his nose with his hands, but it was too late. He couldn't even roar with his throat blocked up. Helpless, he fell to his knees and gripped his throat. His club fell from his hand and noisily hit the floor. He then tried to pull the rats out of his throat. But his hands were too big and his fingers couldn't reach deep enough inside. He tried throwing up, but his air duct was so solidly blocked that he couldn't even manage that. Saliva flew out of his mouth as he writhed helplessly. And then, after a few minutes passed, his arms weakly fell to the floor and his body started to twitch. One more minute was all it took before the door to the next room opened up. The rats that had been in his throat climbed out of his mouth, covered in minotaur saliva but still alive. Well, we won. Yep. We won. Minotaurs die if you clog their throats, I guess? Uh. I think basically any living thing will die if you clog their throat. Really? That's good to know. Enemy or not, holy crap. I feel bad about suffocating that thing to death with rats. Jeez. I ordered the rats to advance while praying for the red minotaur to have a peaceful afterlife. We still had twenty-seven rats remaining. All we had to do was find the dungeon core, and it had to be in the room right after the boss room. As expected, the next room was the core room. In the middle of it rested a familiar-looking, basketball-sized orb. There was Haku's dummy core, with nothing standing between its pedestal and my rats. We can win this. I ordered the rats to jump at it, but someone appeared out of the dummy core at the last moment. It was Chloe, wielding a spear. You can teleport out of dummy cores too, huh? I didn't know that. I could have made a lot more golems if I had known. I can already see the endless flow of golems appearing from seemingly nowhere in the labyrinth. Wait, hold up. Are you telling me they have a second last line of defense? That's breaking some kind of rule, isn't it? Wait, it doesn't matter. She's full of openings. We can sneak a rat past her. Or so I thought, the exact moment before Chloe. Protect me, flame wall! Crackling fire roared up around the core in a circular fashion, turning the five rats I had sent charging to ash. Oh man. 
This is too much. I guess the red minotaur was just for show and this is the real last boss, huh? Come on. Hashtag Haku's perspective. Just in time, I see. Protect me, flame wall. That one short chant was all it took for a wall of fire to sprout out from the floor and surround the core. The rats all backed off after witnessing those at the front burn to death. Such was the power of Haku's magic spear, the flame wall spear. First of all, Haku. She was frozen with a smile on her face. I didn't think the boss monster would be beaten by the likes of rats. I know she has my spell lance, but we can't let our guard down. We have not lost yet. Have our attacking units continue their search? Understood. My lady, I should be able to save some time with this. How will they move now, I wonder? Chloe began thinking to herself. At most, she expected the rats to bundle together and try charging through the wall of flames. She took a good look at the enemy and saw that the rats were indeed bundling together. Very well. I shall counter their charge. If I ready myself, there's nothing I can handle. It used the wielder's mana to cast the high-rank fire spell flame wall after a keyword was said. Indeed, it was literally a magical spear. And a rare one, too. If one were to offer up even a single, flame wall spear, to a dungeon, one would easily earn 100 million DP. It was a treasure among treasures. It was one of Haku's favorite weapons, an impressive feat considering the massive size of her collection. How could the rats possibly break through? There are no gaps in the advanced spell firewall. In a such a situation, there is just one thing the rats can do. As I thought, here they come. Chloe readied herself as the horde of about thirty rats charged her. With the right frame of mind, even the trickiest situation is nothing. This formation is easily dealt, Chloe. As Chloe was fighting and thinking to herself, she heard the voice of Dolch telepathically. Chloe! No, look behind you. The enemy is behind you. There's five of them. What? She turned around, but didn't see anything. She looked for the enemy, but could find nothing. There was nothing behind her. But she said there were five of them. The flames swayed in the air, as if reflecting Chloe's panic. What in the world? Ah. Uh, Chloe. They touched the core. What? But how? She didn't understand anything. The strength drained from her body and the flame wall dissipated. Chloe had failed to fulfill her promise with her lord. That reality hit her with a harsh sense of loss and emptiness but she kept the spear gripped firmly within her hand. What? What the blazes just happened? I don't know. All I know is that there definitely was five enemies approaching the core. You may have misjudged. Double-check the records. They were panicking as no one knows what happened. Well done, said Haku with satisfied smile on her face. She didn't know what had happened, and she felt a need to figure it out. The flames faded slowly and she noticed that something was resting on top of the dimly glowing dummy core. What? Is that? There she saw something that looked like a transparent, square bug. It was unlike anything she had seen before. We we won, didn't we? Yeah, it seems so. Hooray. After my confirmation Rokoko cheered up, she was so happy she basically starts dancing. If I'm so glad I prepared that secret weapon. The wall of flame that flame wall produced was impressive, but not perfect. It sprouted from the floor and went up a good distance, but it didn't reach the ceiling. Oh, so that's what those weird things were for. I knew you could do it, master. Hey, don't call them weird. They're called drones, in my word, and they're like tiny helicopters. Okay, yeah? They look weird in this world. I had originally intended for the drones to help the rats reach locations they couldn't on their own while exploring the dungeon. Making them transparent was just a side thing. I just happened to have a bunch of empty mana potions lying around, so I tried making the drone out of the clear glass bottles and things went surprisingly well. The result? My ultimate secret weapon, the stealth drone capsule. I had made them with only a single material, and thanks to them being golems, they didn't even need a power source. And miraculously enough, I made them just large enough for rats to fit inside of them. Though, it was such a tight squeeze that I had to break the drones to get the rats out. 
I felt kind of bad about that, but we won thanks to it. Hopefully the rats forgave me. Long story short, we didn't have to actually beat Chloe like we did the Red Minotaur. And thanks to the drones being clear, they were very hard to see, especially in the middle of a bunch of roaring flames. It was a bit difficult to pilot the drones while they were buffeted by hot wind, but I managed to land one of them on the core. Things would have gotten real bad real fast if I had missed it. Either way, I successfully made the touchdown. We had won. You defeated me. Following the battle, Haku visited our ordinary cave once again. Chloe was of course with her, wearing the same butler outfit as always. I may have lost, but that was a battle with much for me to learn from. Never would I have thought that gray rats had so much potential within them. Both as scouts and as warriors. I had known the rats would serve as excellent scouts, but I honestly hadn't expected at all that they would beat the boss on their own. By the way, I sent the surviving rats into the forest and ordered them to survive for as long as possible. I might end up using them again sometime. I'm sure they'll grow in numbers if I leave them alone for a bit. I truly did not anticipate being unable to find even a single one of your dummy cores. Where did you end up hiding your dungeon core? Would you be kind enough to tell me? Sure, if you pay me an extra 50,000 DP. Oh my, that little? Very well. Please tell me. I won't be able to sleep at this rate. Whoops. I said that as a joke, but she's actually planning to pay me. Guess I have to tell her now. I'll keep where I hid the dummy cores a secret for now, though. But I had actually hidden the real dungeon core in such a silly place that I was worried Haku would get mad at me. Fearing the worst, I answered her. Well, to tell the truth, our dungeon actually wraps around the outside of the mountain. There's a small room about one kilometer away from here. I put the core in there. I pointed in the direction of the goblin room from forever ago. My initial plan involved Haku noticing that immediately and going straight towards it, but in the end, I never had to move our dungeon core even a single time. And as expected, Haku was stunned to hear that. But she didn't seem mad at all. Rather, she just seemed to be sincerely impressed. It's true. Now that I'm paying attention to it, I can sense the mana in that direction. I can't believe that you extended your dungeon not only to the field outside of the cave's entrance, but that far around the mountain as well. I didn't notice that at all. In other words, you put the dungeon core in a single room connected directly to the outside. What a bold move. My lady, I am quite surprised as well. I knew number 89's strategies were right. Uh, I don't know how you came to that conclusion, Rokuko, but you're definitely wrong. There's a big difference between using a hidden room off to the side and having your whole dungeon just be a single room. Come on. Ha. Huh. Your labyrinth was impressive as well, filled with tricks even I've never seen before. Even your pitfalls were cleverly inventive. Though I do wish to note a flaw in placing weight-based pitfalls on your first floor. I use minotaurs as my primary offensive might this time, but I also have armies based on weightless wraiths. I believe it would have been better to place those pitfalls on the second floor and with plans to adjust them according to which troops I send out. Weight-based pitfalls. Oh, those broken covers I made. Those. Those were just an accident. I accidentally doubled the thickness of the golem covering a few times due to lack of sleep. The fact they wouldn't break under goblins but would under minotaurs was basically just lucky. I'll keep quiet about that though, since she went out of her way to give me advice. And it would have been fine for me even if those pitfalls never activated. She just never would have found the secret path in one of them. And also, NGH, was that riddle you used with the gate of wisdom from your world? Yep. Honestly, I had a tough time getting that gate thing ready. Not a lot of my riddles worked with it. You know other riddles like that. Well, either way, it was quite a clever trap. May I please punch you in the face just once? Ha ha, nope. She still looked pretty frustrated about getting tricked by that riddle. I decided not to tell her that Rokuko had solved it in three seconds. I'm interested in those riddles you didn't use. They're basically just little word games though it looks like they're being translated into your language without my input, so? 
For example, if I were to say, go break a leg. To Rokuko, she would hear that as me saying, go snap the bone in your leg. Without comprehending the, good luck, nuance of the phrase whatsoever. She often just wouldn't quite understand what I was saying. Unfortunately, that meant that even legendary puns were completely lost on her. Following that, a riddle like, what time do you have to go to the dentist? Answer being, 2.30. Would it work with the gate of wisdom? Ah, uh, it seems we've gone quite off subject. There is still much I'd like to discuss with you, but I am unfortunately a fairly busy individual. I built an entire dungeon for this, which I now need to take care of. And although I am concerned about that last trick you pulled, it would be exceptionally burish of me to pry that far into another dungeon's secrets, wouldn't it? That last trick. She must be talking about my secret weapon. I wouldn't mind telling her at this point, but she may want to have some fun by trying to figure it out herself. Now then, Rokuko. It's about time for us to exchange DP, isn't it? Why, yuppers? Haku took Rokuko's hand and gave her a gentle, please smile. She paid us 150,000 DP in total. Despite talking about how busy she was, she really took her time with the mouth-to-mouth -mouth DP exchange. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, Haku. Day 34 Haku went home the next day. With the dungeon battle over, I made the decision to get serious about my duties as dungeon master and focus on managing our dungeon. Not. I actually decided to just sleep for a while. Wii you. I should be able to kick back and relax for a while now. Uh-huh. I'm totally spent after all that. For some reason, Rokuko was resting in a futon laid out next to mine. Eh, whatever. We both worked a lot. I'll let her sleep by me just this once. Master. Huh? What's up, meat? Are you getting too hot? No. I want you to squeeze me tighter. As requested, I hugged meat tightly. Her skin was as smooth and pleasant to the touch as ever. Hold on, Kaima. Listen to what I'm saying, too. And what exactly do you have to talk about? I'm pretty sleepy right now, you know. Seriously, why do you sleep that much? I'm really surprised you actually managed to beat Haku like this. What can I say? I won because I'm in love. E.H.? W.H. What's with you all of a sudden? Rokuko began to panic a little, stammering nervously. Huh? You're the one who asked how I can sleep so much? I just love sleeping. Oh, that's what you were talking about. I totally thought, um, you were saying you loved me or something. Well, yeah? I love you too, Rokuko. Mind if I rub your feet? Actually, just let me rub your feet. No way. Rokuko turned me down, blushing. Eh, all right. I'm gonna sleep then. Hey, Kaima. Are you going to stay with me? You're not going to go anywhere, right? Rokuko spoke to me in a sweet voice, as if seeking comfort. My heart thumped. What, do you want me to leave? No way. Melon rolls don't taste as good without you around, Kaima. I dunno what she's talking about, but all right. I feel like I could sleep all day today. So let's do it. Nope, I'm shipping Kaima and meat. Meat looks way cuter. And that's it for the video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And thanks to you all who subscribed. Now that the battle is over, new characters will be introduced. So stay tuned, and I will meet you all in the next one. Bye.